Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. This is the musings for July uh, and in this video I do a little recap of what I've been up to away from pens, uh, show some pen mail, I'm going to answer one question today and then I'm going to do a quick what I'm writing with. So uh, let's get cracking. So what have I been up to away from pens? Well, it's been a busy month. I did a season of Mozart's Opera Cosi Fan Tutte with a company called Emotion Works here in Melbourne who integrate a different genre of music into the opera and this was 1950s and 60s rock and roll. So I sang some Mozart, sang some Elvis, all that sort of stuff alongside a cast of really, really top-notch rock musicians and, and opera singers. So really um, a great little project and a company I really, really love working with. I also premiered a new work by the Australian composer Don Kay. Uh, this was a piece called The Muse and it was for solo, baritone, piano and uh, wind orchestra. And it was quite a mammoth piece of music to actually to learn and to perform. Uh, took quite a lot of energy and uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and good to be back down in Hobart, which is where I'm originally from see my parents, see some friends, things like that. Uh, so always good to sort of get back uh, to your hometown. Uh, so I took that opportunity and I take that opportunity wherever I can. Coming up next is a range of other concerts. I've got some other operas on the boil. Um, try and find some time to do some composing and all of that. Uh, and then sort of see uh, what I can do with my pens because I haven't had a chance to really play with a lot of stuff recently. And I've got a few inks that I really want to try out. Um, so just to move on to pen mail. So let's start with ink. Uh, I've got two inks in particular this month that I'm particularly excited about, uh, both Robert Osters, and I've showed these already on my channel, Australian Opal Blue and Astaquiza Olive. Astaquiza Olive being exclusive to Bauer Inks in Canada, so if you want this ink, get it from there, and I suggest you do. Um, I'll show these in a little, very quickly in more detail just in a second, uh, but I just wanted to show them again here. These are really nice, nice inks, so let's look at them over here. So here are the two Robert Oster inks, as I said, I've got Australian Opal Blue and Astaquiza Olive uh, in the 50ml bottles here, nice, so I think the labels are new, the design is new. Um, so those are the inks, and here it is on sort of some card uh, stock. Uh, you can see that the Australian Opal Blue is quite vibrant. Uh, it's not dissimilar to a couple of other blues in the Robert Oster line, but this green I think is quite unique, and I think it's actually a relatively unique colour across the board. There are other olive inks around, but it's has some really interesting shading, um, and it's a really interesting depth to the colour, which makes it, you know, really stand out for me. If we look at it here just quickly on Rhodia, um, these are the two inks as well, and you can see sort of how they perform on regular paper, and I think it's, they're quite nice. I think they, you know, they're, they're, they're good sort of stock sort of colours, and nice and interesting and Robert Oster does a great job those blues and greens are really his strength so he is really playing to them here another uh, item that came to me for review this month is the endless uh, notebook here endless being the brand uh, it says that on the back uh, this uses Tomo River paper the 68 uh, gram Tomo River paper and it's numbered lined pages in this particular one nice hardcover uh, book, good elastic. On first impressions, this book uh, seems like it's uh, going to be a winner. So uh, let's keep an eye out for these. They're, they're more available than a few of the other Toma River notebook options, um, although I, I believe there are a couple of brands that are working on more available, getting their books to be more available, which is wonderful. Uh, but nice hardcover Toma River notebooks don't come along uh, that often. So um, this is a good option. It's available from like Goulet Pens and a couple of other retailers. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of videos including this, putting it through its paces and then a full review and all of that. So keep an eye out on this channel. Endless notebooks, Tom River paper, what more could you ask for? Now this month I got a, a pen that I was particularly interested in. It is the Aurora Talentum and uh, it is a really, really lovely pen. I'd wanted this pen for quite a while. Um, not the cheapest pen, but a pen that I had said that I had wanted for a while. I had it inked with Robert Oster Tranquility, uh, and it's just a really lovely all black pen. Uh, it's dried up now because I used it for almost a month, um, but uh, really, really nice pen. Um, I'm going to do a review of this as well, um, but this was a pen that I'd wanted, and it really fits my design aesthetic as well, you know, sort of all that all black and flat top and all of that sort of thing. So, really excited to have this pen. Really looking forward to sort of getting to use it more and more uh, as well. So the Aurora Talentum, I think it's Black Ops or something like that. Very cool pen. Okay, uh, so now I was uh, asked a question a couple of times recently um, about kids and fountain pens uh, and asking what is the best sort of fountain pen that I would get for a kid. Now, 
I took that as a primary sort of school age child uh, who is sort of still learning to write and you don't want to be getting like a nice expensive pen in case they lose it at school or whatever the case may be. Um, and I thought of a lot of different options. Um, I played with a couple of ideas like the Jin House Shark and things like that. But then I thought, well, actually what I want to do is I want to give something that is widely available like in some stores, uh, for instance, Officeworks here in Australia uh, stocks this particular pen um, in a different, couple of different varieties. And so I wanted to really, um, I wanted to show what, I wanted to pick a pen that uh, I thought was reliable, use cartridges, uh, in this case they are proprietary, uh, you could get a converter for, once again proprietary, um, that has the breather hole in the back of the barrel in case, and cap and stuff in case you know they get swallowed, all that sort of thing. Um, and so what I've chosen is the Pilot Kakuno. So why have I chosen the Kakuno? Well, it's a reliable pen, it's a good pen. It has the same nib as the Metropolitan and a few other sort of pens. Um, this particular one I've swapped out for one of their sort of stubs. I'll I'm gonna show this in more detail in just a second. Um, but they come with a nice range of colors, plastic, lightweight. As I said, it's got the breather, the little holes in the bottom of the barrel. It means it can't be eye-dropped, but it means that if um, you, know, you swallow it or something, then it, it will move through, you're not gonna choke, um, which is always a good thing. Uh, and same with the cap uh, as well. So this was the pen I chose for a couple of reasons and uh, let's discuss them very quickly down here. So I chose the Pilot Kakuno. Now I chose this for a number of reasons. Firstly, the fact that it's a fairly resilient plastic, it's widely available. There are other options, things like the Lamy Safari, things like the Pilot Pelicano, uh, uh, Pelican Pelicano, uh, and a couple of even other Pilot pens. The Metropolitan wouldn't be a terribly bad option, except it's slightly heavier made of metal. There are Jinhao pens like the Shark and su such, a number of other uh, pens. Uh, but I chose this because cartridges are available. They are proprietary, but they are available. It's got little breather holes for safety and all of that sort of stuff, but it also comes in a nice range of finishes with vibrant colors and all of that sort of thing. And the nibs are really reliable. Um, now on this one, I've swapped the nib out uh, for one of their um, their sort of calligraphy nibs. Um, but what is really nice about this pen is the grip section. It's just slightly triangular to allow for training of the hand to hold the pen the right way, but not so triangular as things like the Lamy Safari. So it is a comfortable pen to use for adults and children, but um, what I, one of the things I really like about this pen, and this is silly, but I just really like it. Um, kids and adults, everyone loves a little smiley face, and you can see on this pen the U there is dotted with two dots to make a little smiley face. But that's not the nice one. There's also one here. On the bib, uh, on the nib, and so uh, it's just a nice little, you know, cute thing to look down at when you're writing, and kids are going to love that. So if you're after a pen for a child, there are many, many options. But for me, the one that I suggest is the Pilot Kakuno. Okay, let's get on to my what I'm writing with now. Um, so I wanted to do almost a fresh start after last week. I was away from home and I was using the same pen for like five days. And I thought, no, I'm just gonna do a complete fresh start. And so I have five pens ink this month, or uh, this week, uh, particularly starting this week, uh, a couple for review and a couple just because I really like writing with them. So here they are. So starting with the Fine Writing International Brass, this is the Golden Armour version, which is the new version. Uh, I reviewed the previous version uh, and will review this one, uh, but I have this inked with Waterman Serenity Blue simply because I'm reviewing it. Next, I have the Lamy 2000, which uh, is a classic. Everyone knows the pen. It's an absolute beauty of a pen. And I have this inked with uh, Diamine Oxford Blue, which is absolutely one of my favorite inks and such a great everyday writing ink. Next, I have the Twisby ALR. This is the purple, 580 ALR. This came this month also in the mail. Uh, I was expecting it around the end of last month to put in the last video, but it came a few days later. Uh, and I adore the 580 model, I adore the AL model, and I like purple. So it's a bit light, I think, the purple, for my taste. It's sort of more like a, almost a lavender sort of colour, but uh, it's a nice pen nonetheless. Oh, and I have that inked with Rora und Klingner's Cassia. Next, I have the Parker 45. This is a deluxe GT model with a medium nib. I have this inked with Parker Quink Blue Black. Uh, 
nice everyday writing combination, uh, really lovely pen. It's a pen that I enjoy probably more than I thought I would, uh, but really nice writer, really nice basic ink, so something that I really enjoy working with. And then lastly, I have the Panida Avatar in the uh, Riace resin. This is the ultra resin, um, also with the medium nib, inked with Waterman Absolute Brown. So nice little, nice pen, not without its faults. Review coming up, actually would have come out before this video goes live, uh, but nice pen, uh, but not without its faults. So uh, watch the review if you haven't, I'll link it down below. Okay, let's do a writing sample with these pens. Start here with the Fine Writing International Brass. This is the Golden Armour. Uh, the Golden Armour being a reference to the style of engraving here and some traditional uh, warrior armour, I think, uh, that uses a similar sort of pattern. This is a medium, and it comes with a Yovo nib, so it's a great nib. And this is Waterman Serenity Blue. Lovely ink. Um, it's one of the absolute stock standard inks. Uh, and in a pen like this, it just writes beautifully, and it's not too wet, it's not too dry, just a really nice pen, and really good for everyday writing, I, I would imagine, this pen. Uh, there's going to be a review of this pen coming very soon. Next, we have the Lamy 2000. Now, this pen needs no introduction. You can see many videos of this pen on my channel. It's just an absolutely amazing pen. The Lamy 2000. Now, I have this here with a medium, <laughs> as is my way, and the ink here is Diamine Oxford Blue. One of my favourite inks, lovely rich dark blue, just beautiful, and in this pen it's just sublime. Perfect, perfect partnership. That ink is almost always in a pen, one of my top three pens, so it's either in my Visconti Homo Sapiens, my Pelican M805 or the Lummy 2000. Next, I have the Twisby Diamond 580. ALR, and this is the purple. I'm going to put that in brackets. It's not really purple, it's sort of more lavender. And the ink here is Aurora und Klinger Cassia. Awesome purple ink, get some really great sheen on it on the right paper. Uh, just, and in this pen, just a joy to write with. I really do love this model. Um, very happy that they brought out this particular uh, finish. Next we have the Parker 45. Oh, line up, a bit of a sweet spot on this nib. Where are we? Running around a tripod, Parker. <laughs> that was smooth, 45. And the ink here is Parker. Quink, blue black. Uh, this is a medium. Yeah, this is the deluxe GT or deluxe gold trim uh, version of the pen, which you know it's a nice little pen. It's simple, it's elegant, it's from the late sixties. Um, really nice. Um, and this ink, interesting. Actually, this is my pen of the week this week, uh, and uh, I'll be using it a lot. It's just such a really lovely pen and ink combination. Simple, elegant, easy. Lastly this week is the Panida Avatar Ultra Resin. This is a Riace Bronze. Uh, so this is the Panida. This has some hard starts. Av oh, it's just a hard start everywhere. And this is the Ultra Resin, and this is in a medium again. The ink here is Waterman. Absolute Brown. I really like brown inks, I'm really loving them at the moment, and this is a really sort of uh, reliable one, uh, and sort of a mid-brown, which is nice. It's, it's nice to sort of have inks that uh, 
are truly what they say they are. This has absolute brown and it is absolutely brown. So we have the Fine Riding International Golden Armour with Waterman Serenity Blue, the Lamy 2000 with Diamine Oxford Blue, the Twisby Diamond 580 ALR Purple with Rawder und Klingner's Cassia, the Parker 45 with Parker Quink Blue Black, and the Panida Avatar Ultra Resin with Waterman Absolute Brown. So that was my musings for this month. I hope you found uh, it interesting and um, you know, if there are things you'd like me to discuss in these videos, let me know. Uh, I mainly just like to sort of keep you up to date with where I'm at, what I'm doing uh, and what I'm writing with. Uh, and so, yeah, that's sort of what I do here. And if you've got questions, I'm happy to answer them. As I said, I got a couple of times was asked about that uh, pen for uh, kids. Uh, and I think it's a, it's a good option. Uh, there are other options, of course. Um, but for me, that was one that I chose. Uh, and yeah, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me. Uh, you can contact me on my on any of my videos here or my email, which is listed below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, let me know if there's a way you'd like to support the channel. Drop me an email and see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.